Uh, let me play out just a real practical example. There was an argument in this one C-suite between the CMO and the CPO about who is the ideal customer. What is our market and what is the TAM for that market? And the, uh, the CMO said, look, I know I can make my numbers if we define it fairly broadly like this. I know I can generate the number of qualified leads that we need in order to close business and hit our numbers. I've done all the math back to front from lead generation and awareness generation all the way through to closed business and average sale. And that's the only way I can make it work. And the CPO said, let's fine except that our product, that, that TAM is so broad, our product cannot really adequately service all of those diverse needs in that business. And so when we go up, when we go for an RFP, we're not going to be able to really compete with the full checklist of the other companies in that space. And when we actually onboard those customers, they're going to be disappointed and complain, and we're going to have churn. Oh. And so the numbers might look good on paper, but I don't think we can actually achieve that. And lo and behold, that was what was really happening was that they were, they were their close rate was low. They had to discount and their retention. I guess I'm thinking the CMO at that point is thinking, well, that's not my problem. Or, you know, at some level, that's what's going on in their head, right? right. That's your problem, not mine. Well, and yeah. we felt the pressure back from the CPO saying, Sorry. I think we need to narrow our definition of our target yeah. market. And he, but, but his reaction was kind of panic. I can't make my numbers if we narrow it like mm. that. And that's what I'm paid to do. So the only remedy for that was the CEO stepping in and saying, all right, we're changing the playing field. We're going to agree on a, on a definition of the target market that we can really compete in and nail. And CMO, we're going to change your comp plan and, your, and, the, and the numbers you need to hit to match that. And then that fixed it. And then you have that alignment there, but it's only by that coming out and having those conversations and having the space for that to happen that you see that, right? Mm. Rather than what could, taking that example further where the CMO is like, well, I'm, you know, I'm, I'm passing the, I'm passing the numbers over. It's, it's that person, it's that guy's fault. Oh, that yeah. They're not convinced. It's not my problem. Right. It's, it's them, right? right? And you can see immediately that there's, there's no alignment there. Right? You can see it because there isn't, it's like, I'm throwing these, customers over the wall to you. If you're not catching them, well, that's your problem, right? But the reality is, is it, that's not the best way to do it. Well, and it took the CEO um, with a little bit of an outside encouragement, stepping in for the CMO to go to the rest of the executive team and to the CEO and say, I want relief from my quota would feel like an admission of failure. And he was in a position where it was really hard to ask for that. And yeah, because you couldn't say, yeah, you, it's very hard to say that I don't think I'm going to hit these numbers. I, you know, rather than the numbers being wrong, you worry that the challenge is that I'm somehow not doing my job right. or something like that. It becomes back to that emotional, personal aspect of it that seems to get in the way of this alignment, right? Is that these the things are operating. We'd love these things to be operating in a tangible, human, objective way. But the reality is a lot of this stuff happens in a very subjective way anyway. And it takes acknowledgement of that. Yep for things to actually change, right? If you don't acknowledge that subjective, emotional, human element of this, you're not going to get the alignment. You're not going to do it. You're just going to carry on in these sorts of situations where you're living in a different world. 